And it looks like we're about to get underway with the League of Legends Amateur Open staff going up against uh, the champions of Week 6, Nomad Gaming Co. My name is Money Mudkip. I should be joined alongside by Slouch here, one of our fellow casters. What up, guys? How you doing? Hey, how's it going, Slouch? It's good, good to finally be able to cast with you. I think ever since we brought you in, um, you and I have never casted together. No, we haven't. This will be our first time casting together, awesome. so looking forward to it. Yeah, you should be in the game lobby too, so uh, we won't have to worry about any delays from the stream or whatever. We're seeing Thresh go down right away for the Amateur Open staff. Um, actually, I want to go ahead and talk real quick about who we decided to be on this staff team. Uh, we got Dreed's Torrent. He's our usual streamer. Uh, he'll probably be playing in the top lane, but we'll see uh, how that will play out in the game. Gizlodlo, he's our second in command. He helps me with quite a few things. Uh, he will probably probably be playing support. That's the role he is most accustomed to. <laughs> Uh, Kawabunga86, also known as Nerd Rage League in the chat. Uh, he's one of our casters. Plushy Mikey is our media specialist and probably one of the better players on the Amateur Open, but we'll have to see about that. Uh, and also Pippin254, another one of our fellow casters. So there's the Amateur Open staff uh, right. team that we put together. Uh, right now, we also have GG Norm, Ponzer Tank, Secretic, Call Me Visions, and Mojo So Dope 3. Uh, for Nomad Gaming Co. Yeah, right away we see Thresh, Rengar, and Trinimir coming out for the amateur open bands with the response of Zach, Heimerdinger, and Master E bands coming out for Nomad Gaming. A little bit interesting, but we see Druid's Torn instantly locking in Wukong. Yeah, um, Druid's Torn is actually a big Wukong, Wukong player. He really likes to play him in the top lane. Uh, he really likes that uh, Cyclone, that AoE knockup that can deal tons of AoE damage through all stages of the game. Uh, we'll see how he plays that out. Lissandra and Poppy being picked up right now for Nomad Gaming. Interesting choices. That's kind of a lot of single target lockdown potential. With a lot of AoE kind of damage that can come out of Lissandra. Lissandra has been locked in. Poppy's still hovered over. So we do see that they're kind of looking for a sort of hard AoE damage single target initiate kind of deal so far from what we can see being picked. Yeah, definitely. Nomad Gaming, they played some really strong games uh, just a few moments ago up against Beach Kings Gaming. They are the Week 6 tournament champions for the Amateur Open. We're going to see if... I'm, I'm curious to see... If they're going to be pulling out some new comps, or if they're just going to play it safe and they just want to look to stop the amateur open staff. Oh, did my mic cut out? You have quite a bit of background noise going on there. Oh, sorry, what's that? God, stop playing stuff. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sorry, I got, we're actually playing... Uh, we're practicing for some Super Smash Bros. tournaments on the <laughs> side here, so we're going to have a little bit of background noise as well. We actually see Poppy being locked in. I haven't seen that champion in I can't even say how long. But Hecarim being picked over for Amateur Open with Lulu also being hovered over for the team. Yeah, it seems like his Lalo is going to be one on, uh, the one on Lulu or... Oh, the Zyra being hovered and locked in right there for his Lalo. He's a big fan of those CC supports, he really likes to play Leona, and now he's picking out Zyra. I don't think we've seen his Zyra play before. Uh, Gizondo, formerly the support player for Zach, is cute. Now I'm a little bit interested, because now we see Lee Sin and Ramus being locked in, so which actually really makes me question, who's the AD carry, who's the support, who's the jungler? It, it could be a simple cheese strat coming out here from Nomad Gaming. Like, honestly, I'm really cu curious to see this as well. Uh, Call Me Visions right now locking in that Ramus. Uh, him and Mojo So Dope are uh, the two subs for this team right now because a couple of their players had to leave. So Quinn being hovered over right now for Pippin and Timo on Mikey here. I, I, I don't think we're going to be seeing a Teemo. I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I don't think we are. Because <laughs> then that would be, be meaning we were going to see an AP mid Teemo against Alessandra. And I, I don't anticipate that. Pippin is locking in that Quinn, though. So going for a little bit of that kind of burst damage -y early game choice. But Lux has been changed over and will be locked in as the mid lane choice for Mikey. So right now, we are seeing the complete composition coming out for the Amateur Open staff. Uh, it looks like it's going to be Wukong in that top lane to reach Torrin. Gizalo on that support, Zyrek. Uh, Kawabunga on the jungle hack room, Plushy Mikey on that mid-locks, and Pippin254, ADC Quinn 
going to see when Nomad Gaming is going to look to pick up for their last pick here. Yeah, definitely interested to see what exactly they're trying to run with this taunt position. We see Teemo being hovered over. So, still might be going in for this kind of cheesy, uh, cheesy strat. But we'll see what they decide to go with. Still really curious what they're trying to do here. Yeah, right now we see uh, Mojo hovering over Teemo. Uh, has that... Oh, and that's locked in. So there are your two teams right there. We'll see how these two teams are going to play this one out. I'm hoping to see some good things coming out of the amateur open staff. But that, that's not to say that uh, the, the reigning champions right now, Nomad Gaming Co., aren't going to be able to put on a show for us. Absolutely, we might be seeing some of those kind of double bruiser bot lanes that can really do a lot of damage. Whereas on the other side, I do want to point out that they really have this kind of AoE initiation comp with the Wukong ultimate going down, Hecarim's Onslaught of Shadows that can go down, plus with the Stranglethorns coming down from Zyra. We're going to have a lot of AoE kind of initiation that can lock down the entire team if ultimates are placed properly. Yeah, and if the amateur open staff right here can use those ultimates like you said properly, it could be devastating for this I guess you could say Bruiser team comp coming out from Nomad Gaming Co. There is no uh, jungler. It looks like they. I'm very interested to see what they're doing here. I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting pretty excited for this match. <laughs> they might have a nice little. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh no! There we go. The instant switch to the smite there. <laughs> it does look like it's gonna be a Teemo and a Poppy in the bottom main. I mean, that's not to say that just because someone's running a Gloss means they're gonna be uh, on support. But we are seeing Ponzer. He's the usual support player. He's picking up Exhaust on uh, Poppy right now. GG Norm right now. He's usually the mid laner. He's gonna be on that Lissandra. Uh, we'll see if these teams are gonna. Or let's see if no Nomad Gaming rather is gonna decide to go with their usual roles, or if they're gonna swap it up just for the heck of this game. Have a bit of fun. I do want to point out, Emmett, or sorry, Nomad has got a lot of single target uh, lockdown potential with uh, Lissandra's ultimate, Poppy being able to use diplomatic immunity and charging into the entire enemy team, kind of ignoring everybody. Teemo is extremely single target oriented in terms of all of his skills. Ramus is able to taunt a single target for three seconds, so that can be pretty devastating. Plus, Lee Sin's Dragon Kick able to put people out of position, but it is single target oriented. So this is kind of the team comp we see really aimed at picking people off choosing certain targets, assassinating that target, and then moving on to the next one. Yeah, that's a good point. The Amateur Open staff right now has a team that it can it can be used very aggressively, it can be used defensively. However, if Nomad Gaming is able to position their single target damage and their CC very well, then uh, Poppy, as well as Ramit, is going to be able to lock up, a, um, lock up pretty much anyone on the Amateur Open staff to be followed up with some huge damage coming up from Secretic on Teemo and GG Norm on Sandra. And I'm also hoping to see uh, some insect plays coming out of Mojo. We haven't seen <laughs> much of him in this tournament yet. Uh, he'll, let's see what he'll be able to bring to the table. We are into the 1 minute and 15 second delay remaining. Uh, for anyone who just tuned in, this is the uh, League of Legends Amateur Open Week 6. Uh, we very, uh, not too long ago, just completed the tournament uh, with GG. Nomad Gaming Co. rather. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Nomad Gaming Company coming out as the winners for the tournament this week. Congratulations to them. Amateur open staff. Um, pretty much all the guys you see behind this area. No, rather you don't see uh, behind the scenes as well as a couple casters. You have Kawabunga and Pippin. Uh, two of our user, usual casters. You heard them not too long ago if you were watching the finals. And uh, my name is Muddy Mudkip and I'm joined alongside Slouch. He is one of our casters. What's up, dude? Um... So I'm really excited to see this game, honestly. Um, I hope that the staff won't let us down here this time. Sorry, what was that? I can't, I can't quite hear you there, buddy. You're cutting out a little bit on me. Oh, I'm cutting out on you. Oh, that's, that's never a good thing. I was just saying, I'm hoping to see some great play coming out of the Amateur Open staff. Hopefully they don't disappoint us. Hopefully. If they, if they do, we might have to fire a couple of people. <laughs> <laughs> But we are going to be getting into the loading screen here. We can do our traditional skin intimidation factor coming up in just a second here. As soon as the game decides to pop up. You can do it. Come on, client. Push on through for me. Just loading up here. Um, the moment of truth. Dun -dun, dun -dun -dun, dun -dun. It's still loading. <laughs> My computer isn't that great. So working on it. We're getting there. 
We're working on it. Okay, there we go. Right away, I can see Druid's Tarin on Volcanic Wukong. Spell Thief Lux. Only two skins coming out for the Amateur Open Stab. A little bit disappointed. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Blacksmith Poppy. I don't believe you can get that skin anymore, can you? I mean, I wish you could, but unfortunately, it is not a skin that's available anymore. Um, oh, okay. I, used to, I honestly used to be a really big fan of Poppy back in the day. Uh, just something about her, her whole kit just really intrigued me. But that, those are the days of uh, level 15, Muddy Mudkip. Now, <laughs> now I've kind of moved on. And we are seeing a, la a lane Ramus, rather. That's that's very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm calling AP Ramus right AP now. AP Ramus right now. I know it. I know it's going to I'll hold you to that. <laughs> be, Meanwhile, I'd... we also have Cotton Tail, Cotton Tail Teemo being picked up and Dragon Fist Lee Sin. So, Skin Intimidation Factor going to... Uh, Nomad. Nomad. I'm, I'm spacing out now. We're getting late. We're almost done for the day. But I'm going to shoutcast this one last game for you guys. I'm bringing you a nice, real special treat. I hope you guys will all enjoy this. That's how, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see if the amateur open staff or Nomad Gaming is gonna come on top of this one. Um... I'm definitely, I, I want to, I want to see this AP Ramus. I'm really hoping Visions pulls this off. That, 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 those tremors can really hurt, man. Yeah, <laughs> a, a, AP Ramus can be devastating. All right, we are getting into the game here, guys. Everybody picking up their items, and we're gonna be heading on out into the fields. And we are seeing actually support masteries. Uh, or deep into the support support tree rather uh, for plushy Mikey on Lux. He's got that uh, total biscuit of rejuvenation as well as that Explorer's Ward. Um, how do you think that's going to play into his uh, playstyle in this in laning phase? He's definitely looking in for more cooldown reduction in terms of that build. Wants to get uh, his light binding up a little bit more often. Be able to put out a little bit more harass. Lux's early spells aren't really that damaging. More or less, just really annoying. <laughs> So he's probably just looking to get as much cooldown reduction out there as he can, plus more mana regen out into the uh, into this u utility tree, and maybe be a little bit more of a scary earlier game threat than he is. Call me Visions, getting spotted out here by the amateur open staff. A couple auto attacks going down, but nothing too big right there. Um, a good thing to take note though that Nomad Gaming hasn't started with any wards. Uh, Gizladlo on um, Zyra right now, opting to go for an all ward start. Uh, no, no fairy charm like we usually see on supports. And Dreams Torn going a bit aggressive here. Looks like Pippin's just going to back off that one. Yeah, almost landing the Grasping Roots onto this little Sandra there. But did just barely miss, did manage to get out of range safely. Probably would have been able to burn a flash off of that. Looks like everybody's going to be able to back away though. Pippin, Pippin and... Who's our support player again? Plush? Is it Mikey? No, Mikey. No, it's not Mikey. It's Gizlando. Gizlando are heading back down over to the lane. But meanwhile, we actually see Mojo, Sikurdik, and Ponzer heading over down to the enemy red buff. You're going to be taking that away from them as soon as they can. Yeah, and Vision's just taking a tad bit of damage. Looks like he was distracting them. But we do see, actually, uh, Dreeds and Kawabunga looking to steal away that red buff. He's going to pull it into the brush. And it looks like both red buffs are going to still be about Mikey, Mikey going in it. for the steal there. Doesn't quite get it though. Doesn't even get the unite down onto Mojo Joso. Doesn't actually get away. Drives the Q. Flashes away. First play going down to Lisa. Again down extremely low. Pippin does manage to pick up the kill with the Harrier passive. And that red buff is going to go over to Gizladlo. That's going to set Mojo back. Uh, that's going to set him a bit behind here. Because uh, he does have a couple seconds to respawn. And he's still only... Oh no, he did hit level 2 off that. Okay. Yeah, they are just clearing up the camp so that they can get that level 2 a little bit early on. Managed to clear up the camp, get the reset back on that. They did manage to get the per times red team, sorry, red buff, and are heading over to their own blue buff and going back into lane now. <laughs> yeah, and right now I'm going to take a real quick look at um, what Ponzer is running on that support poppy. He's not running any AP. Uh, looks like he does have uh, that Dorn shield as well as a health potion. Um, has that armor. And he's going to go a bit aggressive here on a Gizlalo. Gizlalo taking out pretty low, but uh, Pip is going to go right on to Secret Tick here. Going to get that po uh, passive out. Oh, did I miss something? In, in top one of the top lane, yeah, Drew's actually managed to pick up the kill on Ravis. Barely living though, he only has about 100 health. So, really close fight. Uh, doesn't look Ramus did manage to get his puncturing taunt off, but wasn't quite able to get enough damage. So it was a really close trade there. Yeah, Dreed's Torn on Wukong. Uh, I believe that's his favorite champion. I mean, I like to think it is. He does talk about how he likes to play a lot of Wukong. Pippin going a bit aggressive here. 
Oh, and they're grabbing. They're the just barely missing. So you're going to take it down really low. Gazlato getting stunned up against the wall by the Poppy. Exhaust going down at the Pippin. Gazlato taken down a little bit low by the Blinding Dart. Is able to walk away. Going to eat up one of those biscuits. Trying to get a little bit of his health back. Yeah, Gizlado was taken down pretty low. That heroic charge coming out from Pones around Poppy right now was able to lock him up for Secret Egg to get some decent damage down. And if they're able to combine that with some ganks coming out from Mojo on Lee Sin here, and we are seeing Kawa here come a bit behind. Flashing over. Yeah, actually going r flashing right over. Definitely wasn't seeing that coming. I actually didn't notice. He decided to take Flash on Hecarim. Meanwhile, in top lane here, Mojo gonna flash over, he's gonna land the Tempest Cripple, Dreed's Torn has very little health left, is he gonna be able to get away, he's trying to get away here, oh he uses the decoy, oh, oh my gosh, Cones the moment he sees Resonating Strike coming out, dodges it, now Plush is here to try and do a little bit of cleanup, does a good amount of damage over to Mojo, does manage to back, make him back off, that was an amazing play by Druid, he's using his clone the moment he saw Resonating Strike coming out to make sure that it wouldn't land on him and he wouldn't be killed over to the Sonic Wave. That was very well played by Druid right there, I, I, I can't believe I just saw that. Like, that I'm was honestly incredibly speechless. well played. <laughs> Incredibly well played by Druids there. He's headed back to lane now relatively safely. Got back with two Doran's Blades. So he's going to come back relatively strong into this lane. Yeah, Plushy Mikey right now, he's going to be farming up. He has fallen a bit behind when he did uh, roam to try and secure a kill onto uh, Mojo. Uh, uh, Lissandra, or GG Norm right now on Lissandra Grass. Or meanwhile, in bot lane though, Gizlalo going to land those grassy roots. But Ponto's going to go a bit aggressive. He's Gisalo is going to have to flash away, but Ponto's going to land that heroic charge. He's not going to be able to get off the stun, though. And quite a bit of damage going down to the bot lane of the amateur open staff. Yeah, this is a really aggressive lane. Poppy able to kind of just ignore a lot of the damage, especially due to her passive. She's able to lower a lot. And with her W, sorry, giving her that bonus armor and MR. Able to do quite a fair bit of tanking. Run right in, try and get that heroic charge, and try and land those stuns. Able to do a lot of aggression early on. You know, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm a really big fan of seeing uh, new champions brought in in different roles. Like, for example, seeing the support Poppy and the Rim as top lane. Um, if I mean, honestly, if Nomad Gaming isn't trolling this game and they want to play this legitimately, I'm all for. I'm all for these. So a lot of aggression going down to top lane here. Druid's Torn is looking like he's in a little bit of a trouble. Trying to do is doing his best to run away, taking a lot of damage here. Uses his Z back onto the minions to try and get away. Uses the minion line to get caught out, and Combi Visions won't be able to get anything. But in the mid lane, Mojo actually manages to pick up the kill onto Lux. Meanwhile, in bot lane here, we are seeing quite. A oh, top lane actually. Druid's taken really low here, and he. Doesn't have any pots remaining, so he's got to be really careful. The vision, uh, be, be careful of Vision's Ramus because if he is able to land that puncturing taunt, he'll be able to get a lot of a lot of damage. And its ignite did just come up, so he might be able to secure a kill if he plays this smart. Yeah, actually, ignite going down. He's using that that uh, shield to try and do as much damage. Here. Druid is gonna die to the ignite though, and he will fall. Ramus just pushing out the wave, getting it over to his tower to deny as much experience as he can. Now taking a look at the bot lane right now, Secretic and Pippin are relatively close. They're within one or two CS of each other, and not too, not too much, um, and not too much of a difference there. We are seeing some decent aggression coming out from the Nomad Gaming Company, uh, but not too much coming out uh, for them. Yeah, it looks like, I just wanted to point this out, I actually just noticed this. The Teemo isn't really building any AD, a lot of a damage actually going down, dropping down almost to half. But he is actually building AP as opposed to any form of AD. So he does have two daggers, possibly looking to build into a Nasher's Tooth into the future. But kind of an interesting choice that's coming down here. We actually see Lissandra heading down from the tri -brush. We'll get spotted out by Ward, but they are super overextended. Not sure if they're going to be able to make it out here. Pippin trying his best to run away. The E coming out. Gets the stun out. Flashes. Exhaust being used. A, a Frozen 2 being used as well. Barrier being popped. Trying to keep himself alive. Pawns are taking a lot of damage. We'll pick up the kill, though. Ignite being used down onto Pippin. Go up and down extremely low, but he does level up. Just barely saving his life with about 20 health. Flash coming down from GG Norm, using IQ to pick up the kill. Plushy Mike is here to try and clean up the rest of the damage. Will be to pick up that kill. Glazado picking up another kill. Rampage onto the support. That is three kills right now. Gizlado is 4-0 on that Zyra. I'm very interested, interested to see if he's going to opt to build some AP now. Uh, he's sitting on uh, 1.2k gold. That's not that much for the three kills he did pick up, so he might just decide to go full support. We'll see how he does play that out. Plays that out. However, uh, Calmy Vision's just farming up in that top lane, sitting on three cloth armors and a chain vest. 
I was actually about to point that out. He has a ridiculous amount of armor right now. He's sitting at 184 armor. Meanwhile, Wukong sitting on three long swords. So most likely opting to go into that Brutalizer build. Maybe into a Vampiric after that. Into what I would guess is going to be a Ravenous Hydra. But Wukong's got a lot of armor. In fact, it looks like it's to the point where Druid is saying, I'm not laning that. I'm going mid. Yeah, we do see a lane swap coming out here. He's gonna go a bit aggressive here on a secret egg. He's gonna pop that cycle and secret egg getting dropped really low. The ignite is ticking down on him. And Dreeds will be able to finish off kill. Onslaught of Shadows coming in from Kawabunga here. He doesn't have that red buff. If he's gonna try and get some souls out, but Dreeds is really low right here. And meanwhile in top lane though we see Calm. That juke! <laughs> Sorry about that. We actually saw an amazing juke going out. But yeah, meanwhile in the top lane here, Bushy getting dropped down extremely low. Tremor's being used. Call me Vision's taking a lot of free harass and will be able to walk away. Druids, sorry, I do want to point this out. Druids was actually walking into the bush right behind the red buff and used an S stop. Did not use his clone to make it look like he would have juked over to the left. Actually juking once again using that clone. But then he ended up walking straight down. So it looked like he would have walked the opposite way and actually managed to juke them out totally thinking he went the wrong direction. <laughs> Unfortunately, directed camera did take me to top lane so we weren't able to catch that. We were still Druid's still using this clone like an absolute pro. He's using everything. GG does manage to use Frozen Tomb though. He is going aggressive though, but Pippin is here to try and clean up the kill. Does manage to get the kill onto Lissandra using her Valor form and is going to back away from that. Pippin did use the tag team there to secure that kill onto GG Norman. He's going a bit aggressive here as, we, as well as we see Kawabunga. The devastating charge being used secret hit getting dropped really low. But that uh, Sonic Wave Resonating Strike will be able to pick up the kill on Pippin. And all in all, I think that was a two for two I, I believe so yes pippin fell and druid's Taran fell and timo fell and lissandra fell yes that yes yeah, that should be right i'm pretty sure that's what happened <laughs> call me visions right now in that top lane putting down some decent pressure he is he is in line with his mid laner gg norm in terms of farm right now he's only about three behind uh, so he is doing pretty well to farm on that ramus it doesn't look like the amateur open staff is really worried about it right now we haven't seen kawabunga coming up top we haven't seen too many roams and uh, up to top lane to try and shut him down so visions has been able to farm at his will uh he did manage to pick up a kill on druids earlier and we see mojo sneaking into that top lane brush right here yeah mojo just kind of hanging out over there plushy did not see him walking there there is no vision within the enemy jungle at all so he's totally not aware that he's there looks like vision is gonna try and bait out a taunt he is starting his power ball now trying to get in as close as he can light binding just barely dodging visions backing away from that not trying to do anything meanwhile in the mid lane though galvanga getting a little bit caught on the jungle using that shadow bomb slot absolutely melting secret tick secret secret tick inside of the jungle a lot of regression going down onto ggrm now Druid's trying his best to catch up. GG trying his best to use the, the bushes to an advantage. Using the snare. Ponzer here now is trying to help out. Druid's is still trying to get as close to GG as he can. The stun goes down onto Druid's, but the grasping roots will not give him place. Stranglethorn's being used. Ponzer forced to flash over the wall. And meanwhile, top lane, we see a pun puncturing taunt landing, and that ignite is being ticking on Mikey. Uh, he is going to be able to get away with about half of his health remaining. Um, uh, GG Norm did end up falling, which. Each of these kills that the amateur open staff are able to pick up every here and there, uh, that they're able to catch out with that Zyra Grasping Roots, the Wukong Cyclone, and that uh, Hecarim Onslaught of Shadows is going to help them greatly uh, when it comes to those mid to late game team fights. And Vision looking to get a bit aggressive here, using that Power Ball to, get, uh, to try and close the gap on Mikey here. He's just going to farm up that lane. Yeah, it just looks like just kind of trying to farm it out. Plushy Mikey doing his best not to get hit by Puncturing Taunt. And then he'll probably follow up with the Tremors and do an, a huge amount of damage. Definitely something he's not looking forward to. But he is doing a very good amount of damage to Visions. Visions was building against that Wukong. But now that Wukong's in the mid lane, he doesn't really have any use for all of that armor until later into the game when they start team fighting. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Secret Tick, Norm, and Mojo are here. Kawabunga flashing in, actually gets snared down by the Lissandra. Doesn't know really where to go. Tries to chase down onto Secret Tick. Trying to get over there. Does a little bit of damage, but it looks like Lissandra's gonna be here to try and hold him back as long as he can. Slow's coming down. Kawabunga gonna be forced to back away from this. Yeah, Kawabunga tried to use that flash to get in range of Secret Dick to try and secure a kill for his team. Uh, he wasn't quite in range, but right now in the mid lane, he's gonna use that devastating charge to try and knock back Ponzer. Diplomatic immunity being used, as well as Ring of Frost from uh, Gigi Norm <laughs> on Lissandra. 
Great disengage that came out there from Norm. Really well played. Now we see Pings heading down over to Dragon. It looks like the amateur open staff are going to try and secure the first Dragon of the game. Yeah, if they're able to pick this up, it will further increase their gold lead quite a bit. Meanwhile, Norm actually getting caught out by Cyclone, gets snared, but the Ignite is going down, taking away. He does use Fruiser Tube on himself to save himself the damage from the Ignite. Drew is trying his best to catch up, actually flashes over Norm, barely living his life. The Lux Leader picks him up though. Druids will be able to run away. Mojo trying his best, using a war jump over the wall to try and run away. Retreating back to his turret, dropping Shiro, light binding will land under the turret. Double kill going down for Plushy. Yeah, right there, the amateur open staff doing just what I what I like to see. Some great dragon control, uh, as well as being able to follow that up when they did spot GG Norm, uh, Nomad Gaming. Secretix, sorry, actually getting a little bit caught out here, taking a lot of damage, a little bit stuck in the dragon pit. Doesn't really have a place to run, trying to get over the wall, does manage to flash over into the enemy jungle. Pippin actually flashing over him, trying his best to use catch up, uses the W to get vision, sees Secretix running over. Secretix looking like he's going to try and go invisible in the bush. Pippin looking like he's giving up the chase, handing over to where Colby. Visions is currently fighting on Gizlato. Tremor is being popped out. Static coming back over, taking a lot of damage. Pippin being dropped down very little. Hero charge used to close the distance. Pippin being forced to use barrier. Ignite will finish off the Teemo. Sorry, Gizlato will finish off the Teemo and be able to back away. Call Visions currently using the taunt again. Druid Sword trying his best to keep up though. Trying to catch up to over to the top, Poppy. Now Lissandra has come back using that Frozen Tomb. The Snare going down. Kalabunga getting dropped down really low. Call Me Visions taking down extremely low. Ignite going down, but. Looks like Kalabunga will be able to escape with his life. This fight is all over the place. Still aggression going down to GG Norm. Druid's Torn will pick up another kill. Wow. That was some great... This is something I wanted to bring up the moment it happened. There's just too much action. One of Giz Gizladlo's plants on Dyra actually was able to secure a kill. I'm not quite sure who it was on. I forget now. But uh, he was dead. And the plant managed to pick up the last hit there. He was able to grab him another kill. He is now 5-1-2. and two. He has an amp tome. Uh, it's his only source of AP right now. And he's looking pretty strong in that Zyra. Yeah, absolutely. He is starting to build a little bit of AP. I'm assuming going into that Kage's lucky pick. So, going to get a little bit extra gold income as, as well as a little bit more AP. Secret Deck getting a little bit caught out. Getting hit by the light binding. Laser going across. Huge amounts of damage. Plushy kicking up. Another kill. Yeah, that, that final spark right there. Comboed in with that light binding as well as the E of Lux. The Lucent Singularity. Lucent Singularity, yeah. <laughs> yeah, was able to do tons of burst damage. Secrety, Secret Deck, rather, is rather squishy uh, this early on in the game. So, uh, some strong bursts like that coming in from a champion like Lux will be pretty devastating to him. Absolutely. He does already have that Athenes on Holy Girl finished up, plus the combination of Sorcerer's Shoes. Looks like Mojo actually hanging around here, going a little bit aggressive, going inside of the turret, getting a little bit locked up, Light Binding going onto GG, wasn't able to follow up with that. Also, the Shadow's being used, Flash is being burned, Frozen Tomb being used onto GG there, doesn't allow him to try and catch up. GG on his heels, trying his best to run away. The E from Lux will do a lot of damage, just barely living with the seat. Diplomatic Immunity coming back across. Lux, uh, sorry, Poppy stuck in the middle of the entire enemy team. Plushy picking up another kill. Ignite going out to Kawa with the uh, Poison Dog will pick him up. Double kill going down to Lux. Secret trying to run away. Flash auto attack from Plushy will pick up a triple kill. A triple kill right there coming out for Plushy Mikey. Great Lux play by him. Definitely showing. Homie Vision's actually now getting caught out of the sword. Forest to use Tremors, trying to get everybody to back away. Ignite going down onto Pippin. He's trying his best to catch up, but he's taking too much damage. Forest to back away from this one. Yeah, so unfortunately, we aren't seeing that AP Ramus this game. Uh, Vision Darn it. <laughs> does decide to go for that Thorn Mail. He's still sitting on those two platforms. And he's going a bit aggressive here. He has to be careful. Dro <laughs> Dropping under his own turret. Druid's Torrent doing more damage than he expected to happen. Taking down a tier 2 tower now. This is a 3 0 turret lead for the amateur open staff. Yeah, and Mojo looking to go a bit aggressive here. And right now, uh, the amateur open staff, they are in the driver's seat. They have decent good control of this game right now. They have really nice wards in that bot lane jungle. Uh, they do have uh, the tier 2 mid tower taken down, uh, as well as that uh, tier 1 bottom tower. And right now, um, Plushy Mikey sitting 7 and 2. Athene's Unholy Grail completed, as well as that Me Medjai Soul Stealer. And Pones are going a bit aggressive here onto Plushy. Um, he's just going to try and run away here. He is going to get away. Yeah, it's Secret coming up from behind. Pones are taking a lot of damage. 
Quid is here, but he assists the door. Turn around with the laser and the light body. Huge amounts of damage coming out. Definitely wasn't expecting that. Pwns are forced to retreat. Call me Visions is here. Druid sneaking in with his clone, trying to catch up to wherever Pwns is. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to make it, though. Tremor is being dropped down. Huge amounts of damage being dropped down onto GD here. Druid's trying his best to catch up. Visions getting caught out in the light body. Druid's forced to retreat. Grasping roots, catching down onto Visions. Huge amounts of damage. Strangle Thorns going down. Mojo's trying his best to get in here. Actually, use the Sonic Wave on the clone. Druid's sword is still on the chase, using his E. Pawns are forced to flash away at the threat of Wukong. Now Wuchuit is in a little bit of tough position here, trying to kite around. Mojo is in a little bit of trouble now as the rest of the team is here. Cyclone being used. Druid's taking a really low. Druid's being forced into the turret, but flashes away from the action. And the amateur open staff picking up four kills there, and they're gonna look to take this tier two bottom turret right now. Druid Storm playing an exceptional Wukong. I don't think I've ever seen a Wukong play as smart as Druid Storm. Sorry about the phone call, guys. Just got a little bit of a phone call going on. I'm going to check out what's going on. Looks like it's nothing important, so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Now we got a little bit of action going down here. Gizlato actually getting a little bit caught out here by Vision. They're just trying his best to catch up to drink that taunt down. Trevor's going down. Powerball being used. Gizlato taking out extremely low. Gets the puncturing taunt. Visions will pick up the kill onto Gizlato. Yeah, and Gizlato there picking up his second death of the game. He, he did manage to pick up another one since the last time we talked about him. He is 6-2-8 right now. Um, sitting on that Fiendish Codex, uh, the Kage's Lucky Pick, and that Philosopher's Stone. We see Pones are in the top lane trying to go a bit aggressive on Takawa. It's not going to be doing <laughs> too much right here. But that tower is dropping pretty low, but the minions are quickly running out here. Yeah, it looks like Kawa is just going to try and take it out. He's actually taking a lot of damage now. Kami Visions has a home guard. Flashes in, gets force taunted under the turret, which has to forcefully go back in that turret. Kami Visions picking up another kill there. Yeah, great play there by uh, Visions to flash in to get that puncturing comp, bring him back under tower, and secure that kill for his team. And we see Secretic and GG Norm pushing out that bottom lane. They are going to get some decent damage onto this, if not be able to secure it, because Lalo and Pippin are making their way down there. Uh, to try and stop that. We do see Dreed's Torrent gonna finish off that top turret. Yeah, there we go. So they have traded a tier 2 top turret for a tier 1 bottom. Definitely more in favor for the amateur open team cast. Staff, staff. Yeah. Yeah, staff. staff. We'll go with that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, six, ta six towers now taken down uh, by the amateur open staff. Um, whereas Secret Dick is staying in stealth right there. GG Norm going a bit aggressive here on the game. He's kind of hanging out. He does pop out, gets immediately dropped down by Pippin, though. <laughs> Did not expect that damage. Dropped down incredibly fast. Yeah, Secret Dick was trying to make some sort of sneaky play with that uh, stealth coming out from Teemo. Not quite sure what, that, what that's called, because we don't talk about it too much. The camouflage. And meanwhile, in top lane, we see Vision's going a bit aggressive here onto Dreeds, but he's just going to back off. That was actually really good. Druids noticed that Visions was acting extremely aggressive, realizing somebody had to be coming. So he immediately used his clone so that Ramus was forced to powerball into it. <laughs> that way he had nowhere to go. Pwns are actually using diplomatic immunity under turret. Actually stunning the clone! Using a clone exactly to his advantage. Druids doing his best to run away. Using Cyclone so that Call Me Visions can't get that taunt up. Absolutely not letting them use any of their CC against them. <laughs> Dreed's throwing, get out, getting out a bit of a laugh while that puncturing, puncturing taunt lands. Lucid Singularity as well as that final spark able to finish off. Um, Vision's right there, but Pwns is in a bit of trouble here. He's a bit behind enemy line and he's going to get taken down there by Dreed's. Yeah. Meanwhile, Amateur Open did manage to pick up another dragon while two members of Nomad were sitting at the top lane trying to take down Druid's Torrid. So that was another free objective taken down for Amateur Open. Yeah, right now we're looking at a 20 kill lead coming out for the Amateur Open staff. GG Norm going a bit aggressive right now. He's going to spot uh, Gizlalo here. The Ignite's ticking down on him. He will fall. That Frozen Tomb is going to be able to finish off the kill. And Pippin going a bit Pippin. aggressive here in that tag team. The Onslaught of Shadows as well as that Final Spark being used. And going to pick up that kill on GG Norm. Cowbunga looking like he wants that Teemo. That Global Taunt is too OP, but he will back away from that as well. Yeah, he doesn't want to be taunted too much by that. He, he could, uh, it could prove to be troublesome. Um, we are seeing Kawabunga right now. He might be going into the sh to a sheen with that uh, sapphire crystal as well as that amplifying tome. He is already sitting on a spirit of the elder lizard and a spirit visage, uh, granting him some good magic resistance. Uh, from I think Poppy deals some good magic damage uh, as well as uh, Digi Norman Lissandra. Do see Secretic, however, going for a bit more of an AP Teemo. He might turn that Stinger into a Zephyr or a um, 
Nashers. Nashers too. Thank you. Uh, whatever he really, whatever we really, whatever he really wants to go. Um... Druidstorm actually going super aggressive into mid lane. You're using the deco to try and close the distance onto Ponzer. Ponzer using his W to try and get that. Uh, distance away, Paragon of Demacia will be able to run away from them. Now they're looking really aggressive into the jungle. Yeah, the amateur open staff in this game have been doing a good job at keeping uh, the Nomad Gaming Company's jungler warded up. They were able to invade it multiple times. To Bones are actually getting a little bit caught out here, trying to use Druid to try and close it. Use this Korok charge, but the laser will come across. Druid's turn will finish off the kill, though, with his EQ combo. <laughs> You know, I feel I feel in some way that they were they were trying to steal the kill from each other. Dweed's going a bit aggressive uh, right when that final spark was being used, and Vision's being caught out here at the blue buff. Yeah, Vision's falling down inside of his own jungle that was warded. They were aware that he was there, getting caught out, and will fall down. More bonus gold coming down for open staff. And Nasher's Tooth right now finished up on Secret Dick on Teemo. He's 110 and 3 right now. He has been getting pretty shut down this game. Secret Dick taking a lot of damage. Looking like he just kind of wanted to give up on his life there going down. GG Norm actually locking up Druids. Druids flashing in after using Cyclone. Frozen Tomb being used on GG Norm himself. Druids Torrent being kicked away. Mojo trying to use the ward to run away. Will manage to escape from that, but GG No will fall down after that engagement. Another kill be oh and Mikey was able to finish that off that snipe. <laughs> wow, you there's really great snipe coming down there from Mikey. Pones are using that to provide immunity now. Trying to pick up the kill onto Gizlato. Gizlato will fall. Pones are taking down extremely low. Cowabunga trying to Gizlato's passive will actually finish him off. Plushy Mikey's trying his best to run away from guy. Oh my goodness, Pippin's huge amounts of damage will drop him down from almost 25% health. Yeah, that vault there right now, he has that maxed out on uh, Quinn. He did opt to, to max his heightened, seconds, his height, heightened senses second uh, on Pippin, that W being able to grant some a nice vision in, in an area. And GG Norm going a bit aggressive here. He's going to use all of his abilities, not quite sure what they're called, the Glacial Path, the Ice Shard, as well as that Rampage. Oh, that's Hecarim's ability. <laughs> <laughs> frozen Tube is the ultimate. Yeah, Frozen Tube. Uh, Secret Egg looks like he really wants to go down onto Pippin. Pippin's actually switching down into Tank Team. Huge amounts of damage. And a Tank Team fifth second fault part will finish off Teemo. Yeah, Pippin picking up another kill. Ooh, and they're going a bit aggressive on him. But out here, combination of ultimates. The Tarn won't drop him down. Kill's going down over to uh, Mojo. Mojo So Dope. <laughs> <laughs> Mojo So Dope right now. Well, I, mean, I guess you could say Mojo is so dope. Uh, not really. He's 4-4-2, four, four uh, sitting on that Spirit of the Ancient Golem. Uh, he has a BF Sword, as well as that Sightstone and Mercury Treads. He could look to build that um, that BF Sword into a Bloodthirster, which is usually what we will see on some Lee Sins. Uh, Puncturing Taunt going down onto Dreeds in that top lane. He's going a bit aggressive, though. He's going to use that Clone, as well as that uh, Cyclone. Vision's getting dropped really low. The Ignite is kicking away. Zonia's! What?! I was actually about to point out, Druids has an arm, uh, Seeker's Arm Guard going on early on. Pretty, Kind of an interesting choice, because what it allows him to do is he can run right into the enemy team, start up Cyclone, and when he feels his life is being threatened, pop that Zhonya's. A little <laughs> bit of a, kind of a trolley move, but it is effective in some senses. And if we take a look at Wukong's abilities, none of them, except for his uh, oh. decoy, scale off AP. Yeah, so that is the only ability that'll scale off AP. He's using this more or less to keep himself alive, as it looks like I think he wants to be going as balls deep as possible in every engage that he can. Yeah, if he's able to get right in the middle of Nomad Gaming's team comp and lock them up with that Cyclone, being followed up by the Light Bindings from Plushy Mikey, as well as those Grasping Roots and the Strangle Thorns from Gizladlo, I mean, even followed up by the Onslaught of Shadows will be devastating. Something else I wanted to just point out, I didn't realize this, but Lux has actually hit maximum stacks on her Magi's Soul Eater. And so, she is sitting at 20 stacks of fully stacked Magi's Soul Eater right now. So she does have that bonus, 50% cooldown direction, and another kill going down for her. She is still legendary. <laughs> yeah, Plushy Mikey playing an extremely strong Lux right now. Yeah, she is absolutely devastating right now. Vision's actually getting a little bit caught up. Pippin getting taunted. Vision's trying his best to do as much damage as he can. Pippin using that vault to close up the distance. Kalabunga is here to try and help out with his team. Oh my goodness. That light binding doing a humongous amount of damage. Ponzer is now on the run. Trying his best to get away here. Flash coming down onto Kalabunga. Tries to push Ponzer back, but heroic charge will keep Ponzer where he is. Able to retreat back into his lane. Or back into his base. Yeah, and the amateur open staff right now are going to try and push onto these Nexus turrets. 
Or no, they're gonna opt to go for that bottom uh, inhibitor turret, whereas Gizlando and Juid they're gonna be pushing on. And GG Norm going a bit aggressive here using that frozen path, glacial path rather, to get uh, in range of that ring of frost. And Gizlando gonna have to use that strangle thorns to try and save himself, but it's not gonna be enough. Dreed Storm going a bit aggressive here, diplomatic immunity being popped under him. Um, that's not gonna be able to save Ponzer and Dreed Storm going beast mode right now, and Mikey's gonna pick up that kill onto Norm. Oh, the home guard actually coming down from Vision, trying his best to catch up to Pippin. Pippin forced to flash away, does get taunted though. Vision's trying to retreat to his own turret to the safety, but he is too low now. The dive is coming down. He's trying his best to run the Lux Laser, will finish him off. I just want to go ahead and take a look at Vision's armor real quick. 435 <laughs> movement speed. <laughs> Uh, I'm, <laughs> I was looking at the movement speed and got really scared there for a second. It's actually 363 move, uh, armor coming over him. He's sitting on two chain fests and a thorn mail right now. And even that warden's mail. Like, I don't even know what to say. He's full armor <laughs> He's right one armor-filled monster. But unfortunately, a lot of damage coming out right now is from that Lux. Doing ridiculous amounts of damage. Let's check out how much damage that final spark is doing right now. 500 plus another 568 on top of that. So yeah. over 1,000 damage coming out from final spark with only a 30-second cooldown. Yeah, that is huge. Especially from uh, the little bit of extra damage. I believe that's 180 damage coming out from the Illumination fire illumination flare rather uh whenever uh, lux uses one of her abilities on an enemy uh it procs or it applies a debuff known as illumination flare and once that's get to oh and mikey a little bit oh but just cast the light body behind him combo with the laser and absolutely melts ramus gg now in a little bit of trouble trying his best to rush over to the baron uses his e to the back of the bear pit but he will drop and Flash actually Druid. coming up from Druid, realizing that Lily Sand is over the wall, trying to do the war jump, gets the war jump over, wall, over the wall. Druid's trying his best to chase over him, uses the E over the wall, manages to close the distance. Lee Sand lands Resident Strike onto one of the Supermans, manages to get away. Cyclone was used, another war jump and a Flash being used. Mojo trespassly trying to run away with his life. Meanwhile, Kawabunga and Plus, you're actually trying to take this Baron away. And a, a boss is actually being coming out. <laughs> boss comes out. Very interesting here. The, the fate of Nomad Gaming, I think, has been sealed here. Uh, the amateur open staff are going to look to finish off that uh, last Nexus turret and then eventually move on to the Nexus and end the game here. Um, I'm not quite sure what the problem here is. I'm going to go ahead and turn on chat real quick. Sorry about that. My mic actually ended up getting muted there. Yeah, so looks like the game should be pretty close to getting done here. Though I don't want to put anybody off yet, but... It's kind of hard not to root for my own cast members. So, <laughs> looks like the game might be ending up pretty soon here. Look, Baron is about halfway health. Ponzer is around there. Might be trying to go in for a little bit of a crazy Baron steal. But the rest of the team is actually sitting at the purple sides nexus, trying their best to finish off the base. Yeah, let's hope this game can resume uh, <laughs> pretty quickly here. If you want to see uh, the results of this game, who knows? Nomad Gaming might come back. Um... Some, some crazy throws happening from our cast members, in which case some people will be fired. <laughs> <laughs> in which case some punishments will be laid down. And the amateur open might oh, might not look too good for the for the staff for another staff team in the future, but who knows? Yeah, it looks uh, like yeah. we're just getting out of the puzzle. And I think about a minute here. But I do want to point out something. You were saying that Zyra was getting pretty fed down in her lane. She has a Morello Nomicon, uh, Sorcerer's Shoes, and is sitting at a needlessly large rod and a Blasting Wand. Looking like she's going to be building into a Death Cap now. Yeah, it gives Lalo opting to go for that full AP uh, ever since he started picking up some a decent amount of kills early on in the game. And poor Secret Dick. He's 1-13 in 13 on Teemo. Teemo's... Not one of the most liked champs in the world, and it's sad to see it. It's sad to see him be shut down so hard by the amateur open. Okay, sorry. Right. Now my mic is getting a little bit funny here. Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna be trying to see what last-minute desperation moves Nomad is gonna be trying to pull out here, and hopefully we won't have to fire any cast members this time. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll yeah, see. And... Maybe maybe if Ponzer gets a little bit lucky, he might be able to steal away that Baron. Kalabunga is level 16, so his smite is going to do a pretty decent amount of damage. Let's check out how much smite is doing. About 940 true damage, so <laughs> it's going to take quite a bit of effort to steal away that Baron buff from him. 
Yeah, and I think we are seeing uh, in the chat that the, this pause was not anywhere near this long. The game has ended, uh, has ended rather, and the League of Legends Amateur Open staff has uh, won this kind of fun game uh, against the champions of Week 6, Nomad yeah. Gaming Co. Uh, congratulations to them, as well as congratulations to Nomad Gaming for winning the tournament. And we hope to see them again next week. And looks like we're just going to hop right out, out of this game. Alrighty then, going to be heading on out of here. So is that everything for today, Muddy? Yeah, or we have another big surprise up our sleeve? <laughs> Nothing.